Hi everyone. Um, I want to talk about my list of symptoms that I'm going through at the moment and they fluctuate and come and go. But first I want to tell you what conventional medicine has um, kind of said that basically I've got. So number one, they think I've got hypothyroidism. And number two, um, an autoimmune disease called rheumatoid arthritis. Um, now I've had joint pain um, and inflammation in my joints for probably only about four days um, and I have loads of other symptoms that aren't related to those two um, illnesses. Um, so that's why I'm kind of not... what's the word? I'm kind of thinking that it could be something else, for example maybe Lyme's disease. Um, which can umbrella those kind of symptoms too um, with, with what encompasses Lyme's disease. Um, and it's quite likely that it might be, but so far my Lyme's results have come back negative. So I'm, um, I'm looking into that a bit deeper. It's very hard to actually find the little tiny things in your body and for it to come out positive. So we'll see um, how that goes and I'll keep you posted on that. Um, so here are my symptoms. <laughs> Uh, so first a few general points, um, extreme fatigue and daytime sleeping, sometimes I can sleep up to four hours in the daytime, really really heavy limbs um, and extreme difficulty in walking, um, slow movements of um, my arms and my legs and my hands, everything really, um, which means that my reactions are also very slow. Um, my arms feel extremely weak, um, so do my legs and my hands. Um, do I have it here? Um, so sometimes, especially in the morning, uh, this is a balloon filled with water. Um, and at the moment I can squeeze it and make a balloon. But in the morning, I'm so weak that I can't even make the balloon. Um, so I just don't have strength and kind of fine motor skills to be able to do that. Um, for about eight, uh, seven or eight months I've had really sore neck um, and sometimes going back down into my spine to my lower back as well. Um, today that's not so bad actually, um, some days it's much worse. Um, okay, so aching joints, um, so literally, so my shoulders, my elbows, my wrists, my hips, my knees, and my ankles, um, they can feel like, like there's a little balloon inside them. And when I move my joint, it's like I'm squashing and compressing the balloon. Um, so that's how it started. And then it developed onto kind of um, really sore joints. And then very quickly, it, it came onto kind of like stabbing, stabbing really painful, sharp pains. Um, but that comes and goes. So it can move around my body quite quickly or it can stay there for a while and then go away. So it just it fluctuates all the time. Um, so I've put painful length because sometimes I can really feel pain here and sometimes it comes onto the right side as well, but less frequently on the right for me. Um, but also that encompasses um, my lymph under my armpits and um, my hips, so my inner hips, my knees, my ankles. Um, and so it doesn't really feel like the joint itself as in the kind of the bone in the movement. It feels more like the nymph, the lymph that, that hurts. Um, I also get um, what I'm calling bone aches and pains, especially in my upper legs, on the inside upper legs. It's almost like the bone is like a rope that you can pull and all the way down the rope is this like tension that's being kind of stretched and it hurts. Very weird feeling. Um, muscle weakness. Um, so sitting up or leaning causes pins and needles almost instantly. Um, touch wood, I haven't had it yet. Um, but uh, like a couple of days ago, I'd sit up in this position and my whole legs would go into pins and needles like within five seconds. Um, and the same if I'm lying down and maybe I lean a little bit on one side or the other, I get it all the way down my arms into my hands and fingers. 
um, dizziness. Um, so if I kind of move too quickly or, or even if I'm standing still, I can feel really kind of dizzy and woozy and kind of a lack of balance. Um, just going back to um, the knees, sometimes they feel kind of loose and they can't take my weight. Um, so I'm, like, I'm often holding myself up on furniture or the walls. Um, something that started happening about three or four days ago was feeling really nauseous. Um, and that can come any time of the day. Um, but uh, more often it was more in the morning. Uh, and just like almost like a lump in my throat. And I really didn't want to eat because I just felt... Um, so that's not been a nice addition. Um, difficulty in eating and drinking, yeah. So sometimes it's just like, I don't want to, it's like get stuck or it's just not flowing well and I just really don't feel like it. Um, sometimes it's really hard to breathe normally and do a relaxed kind of full breath. Um, and I remember a while ago lying in the garden on my sarong and um, I literally just felt like the muscles that worked my lungs weren't strong enough to kind of make me breathe in and out. Um, so, and I don't think that was necessarily based on um, feeling anxious. It was just something else going on that was stopping that. Um, so I've had that more than once, definitely. Uh, where am I? Um, light and sound sensitivity, so that speaks for itself. Um, loads and loads of headaches, and I'm normally the kind of person that doesn't ever get a headache. Um, and it's usually kind of round the back, um, and to go with that is like this really intense pressure around both eyes. Um, just really, really intense pressure, and my eyes are so sore. Um, that's um, not something I'm used to. Uh, things, oh yeah. Um, so Robin's been noticing that my breath smells different and I've been noticing that I my body smells different. So my body odor smells different and it's not normally, it's not the Joanna smell <laughs> that I, you know, I notice or sometimes I notice, um, but it's like a, because normally I notice my body odour once a month around my period time, it's much stronger. Um, but at the moment I can smell it every day and it's as soon as I've had a shower, I can smell it. So it's just always there kind of lingering and it's like it's coming out of my skin straight away. So I don't know what's going on with that. Uh, dry skin and scalp. Um, so I've had that quite a long time, the dry scalp thing. And usually, because I wash my hair once a week, maybe a bit a uh, bit more frequently than that, but not much. Um, at the beginning, the first two days, um, it's pretty dry. And, you know, I get a little bit of flakiness. Um, but also I've noticed recently, especially after I have a shower, down the sides of each um, finger, I've got like these peeling off bits of skin that just want to come off. Um, and a kind of a bit scaly. It's not itchy or anything. It's just like so dry that it's just coming off and that's kind of unusual for me. <laughs> um, also um, an old problem that I had psoriasis here and I had it on the back of my neck but just here it's coming back again on my elbow. Um, that was two weeks ago it started coming back um, and I'm, I'm not itching it. <laughs> I'm being very good. Um, Less elasticity and collagen in my skin. I noticed that quite a long time ago, maybe probably under a year now, uh, especially in my legs. And I don't think that's because I'm getting older. I just think it's it kind of rapidly started happening. Um, sweating um, under the armpits. And... I think I sweated a bit everywhere all over my body when I had my um, infection, my bladder infection, just because I was really trying to kind of fight it off. But even now that's gone, um, I still can sometimes sweat under the armpits for no reason. Like I'm not even hot, I'm just sweating there, you know, a bit strange. Um, but at the same time, um, 
for a while I've noticed I can't regulate my own body temperature. Um, so I've already said about the bladder infection. I used an, a one dose antibiotic and that went away uh, within three days. That was pretty good. Um, I'd say that my hair is falling out more than it ever has in the past um, when I wash my hair and also in the brush it's coming out a lot more easily. Um, to do with digestion, I can very easily have diarrhoea or the opposite constipation. Um, so when I was in England for example I was eating lovely lovely food um, but pretty much the whole week I had diarrhoea. Um, and then I've had it a bit recently here, but sometimes it can just be maybe the morning and then it's not later on. Um, and yeah, so in the same day I can be um, having constipation or diarrhea. So it's just kind of really random and um, doesn't really coincide with particular foods that I'm eating or anything. Um, my periods are, have become very irregular. Um, I'm not really sure when it's supposed to be coming now. I'm so confused with it. Um, about three or four months ago now, um, it it swivelled two month two weeks sorry um, to the other moon, and and then I was um, like three or four days later than when it would have been the month before, and then the month after it was five days early. So it's just kind of all over the place. Um, I'd say it's much easier for me uh, to cry or feel anxious. Um, okay, this is a specific section relating to um, brain uh, problems or issues. So confusion, um, slow mental reactions, poor concentration, memory loss, um, I lose things frequently and I never used to, like keys, mobile phone, where's that gone, where are my shoes, you know. Um, word finding, I'm having to do a lot. Um, difficulty in understanding situations around me. If there's a lot of stuff going on or more noise than usual and it's not calm, I'm like not quite understanding what's going on. Um, sentences can become really muddled. Um, so for example, uh, my daughter said something to me, a short uh, sentence. And I was like, hang on, Heidi, can you just repeat that to me? Because I didn't understand what you just said. And it did sound completely garbled, like all shuffled around the words. Um, and I just didn't understand what she said. So <laughs> I don't think she did it on purpose or anything. Um, so basically I got her to repeat it slowly and clearly. And then I was able to understand what she said. Um, brain blanks and kind of staring and not knowing why I'm doing something or even something as simple as, okay, so I've made a decision to do something. This is might be on my mobile phone. And then I come to all my apps and I'm like, I don't know what app I'm supposed to be pressing right now. And I'm just staring. And then it takes me ages to, to work out what I was actually doing and then carrying on with the process. Um, so understanding menus and reading books and text can be really hard as well. Um, right, so now I'm moving on to other random selection of things. Um, I've already said about loose knees. Um, I have strange, very, very thin, very long, um, white or light coloured hairs that come up on my body in random places. So, yeah, shoulder, tummy, parts of the arm, like random places. They're br oh, I had one here. It's like, so I pull them out. Uh, I don't know what that's got to do with, but anyway. Uh, sometimes my muscles or my, my limbs will make jerking movements. Um, I had two weeks of spasms in my kind of lower abdomen region. Um, and I don't know if that was relating to um, a bladder infection coming, um, but that was really weird. Even when I kind of laid on the bed and really tried to relax and put my hands there and give it lots of love and attention, um, it was just like spasming um, and it, yeah just like these tiny little movements like almost like little wriggling worms or something was inside me moving very odd um, different organs of inside me ache so my kidneys um, on this side at the back 
um, my heart can be really, really painful. I had that this morning for a while, like really sharp pain um, around there. Uh, but it goes, so that's good. And then, oh yeah, something I haven't really had very much of in my life, and that's nightmares. Um, I have had vivid dreams, but I've had quite a lot of nightmares, really, really strong, intense nightmares that just kind of stay with me quite is easily because they're so vivid. I'm like, what on earth was all that about? <laughs> um, when I'm lying down sometimes, or even when I'm sitting or standing, I can really feel my pulse very easily in my body. Um, and it can be anywhere. It can be in my head, my shoulders. Sometimes I just feel it all over. I can just, and normally when I'm kind of well, I don't notice my pulse throbbing in my body. It's, you know, your heart's beating and it's just happening in the background. I don't notice it. Whereas here I'm like, like, it's like really strong. Um, Sometimes with my eyesight, I feel like I've got delayed focusing uh, and sometimes distortion. So when I was driving, I've stopped driving now, but um, sometimes I might notice that the whole um, scene in front of me might just kind of almost have a crack in it and shift. So there's like these shifting kind of things going on and that was a bit odd. So I was like, yeah, I don't think I should drive anymore. Um, oh yeah, painful pressure points that started happening about four days ago as well. Um, there was one or two in my shoulder just here that was so, so painful. I'd touch it like really lightly and it'd be really, really sore. And then maybe I'd stand up and walk on a hard floor and, and I can feel loads of pressure points on the underside of my feet. And I'm kind of thinking that's a good thing because it's kind of my body speaking to me and, you know, the symptoms are clear that something needs to, to heal and there's something going on and, you know, just work out what the hell it is. <laughs> um, stiff jaw. Um, I had this probably about a month ago uh, or a bit more than that for about two weeks. Really stiff jaw and I had to keep kind of doing this, opening, closing. Um, and I also had that uh, about six years ago for about six months, uh, but I don't know if that's related to what I've got now. Um, tight chest. Yeah, that's all I've got here. And I'm sure I've forgotten some because there's just, you know, multitudes of things going on with me. Um, but I think this list will basically become more interesting when I've had a little bit more kind of diagnosis of what's really um, going on with me. Um, uh, I know that hypothyroidism can be linked very closely to taking uh, lithium carbonate um, and uh, yeah I think there could be things that I could do with my diet maybe I'm a vegan so uh, maybe I need to take some more iodine I don't know it's things that I need to look into much more um, but I don't I can't see that being a yoga teacher and the amount of physical activity I've done in my life that in in four days or five days of being in joint pain that I can suddenly have rheumatoid arthritis to me that seems a bit crazy um, so I don't I don't believe that I can just call it that and then start treating that I think it's something else so um, I'm waiting for my um, my other Lyme's test which is going to come back this Friday um, so I'll tell you what the results are with that um, and keep you posted basically. So I hope that wasn't way too long for you um, and I'll see you really soon on the next video. Bye.